Gifts of Grace International and Kathleen Rosner presents a program designed to equip, edify, and empower the body of Christ through love and God's grace. Kathleen's vision is to lead by encouraging everyone to serve and become involved in the Lord's work, empowering a new generation of intercessors through impartation of the power of God's love and the teachings of the Word of God. Now let us welcome Kathleen Rosner. Hello, welcome to Gifts of Grace International. It's so nice to be back with you, and I appreciate the time that you're taking to enjoy the Word of God with me, and we're going to see what all the Lord has to say today. When I was studying um, about our time together, uh, the attitude of worship came on me, and I was praying about worship, and I listened to some other teachings on worship, and sometimes we think of worship as what we do on Sunday mornings, the praise and worship, and going to church, or perhaps our private time in our office or our room where we spend time with the Lord. But I'd like you to think of worship in a whole new level today. I'd like, to think of, I'd like you to take the opportunity to think of worship as a lifestyle. And it doesn't mean that you're constantly singing or constantly praying. It could be that, but it's in your heart. It's what is in your heart. And when we think of what Jesus did for us, and I will remind you with some scripture here, we understand why that worship is so valuable and so important. It's Psalms 85.1, and I'm going to read it out of the message translation. Lord, you smiled on your good earth. You brought good times. You lifted the cloud of guilt from your people, and you put their sin far out of sight. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all for us. And those of us who have uh, accepted Jesus in our hearts, we can fully embrace the fact that all the guilt, all the condemnation, that cloud that hung over us, we are free. We are free in Jesus' name. So this is how much He loved us. He gave us His Son. And we can have eternal life and freedom in Him. To me, that sounds like someone that is worthy of any worship that you would have. He is worthy of our worship. Um, and then we think of how to worship Him. And of course, like I said earlier, going to church is worship. And we have wonderful praise and worship leaders that enter, uh, enter, help us enter into His presence. But I want to talk to you about how to worship Him. Not just a place, not just going to your spot where you go on perhaps Sunday mornings or Saturday evenings, but I'm talking to a place in your heart where you truly embrace Him and you truly celebrate how big He is. John 4, 24 says that God is a spirit and we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That is true worship. It doesn't say sometimes. It doesn't say maybe. It says we must worship Him in spirit and truth. Well, your spirit inside of you is connected with the Spirit of God. So as you yield to that spirit in you, that worship will flow out. But what did I say on the other side of that? We need to yield to that true worship. So it's not just... Um, uh, something we do with our mouths or raising our hands or we worship Him in dance or we play musical instruments, but it's relinquishing ourselves to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. It's a total surrender. So as we focus on the true worship, truly worshiping Him, I'll give you some, uh, I guess, maybe some steps that I've used in the past and I learned a few years ago, kind of a test to see Am I worshiping in the flesh, or am I worshiping out of, the, out of my spirit? So what's your heart thoughts? What is in your heart? What are you thinking? That's a good question to ask yourself. Your heart is not in what your mind is not on. Now think about that. Your heart, your heart motives, and your heart is not going to be completely in what your mind is not on. So if you think of your mind um, thinking of your job situation or a relationship situation and you enter into what you think is worship, if that's what's on your mind, your heart has not truly entered in to relinquishing to the Lord. So sometimes it's just casting that care. We've heard that phrase. 
But sometimes it's just saying, I can't do this. I need you. You are bigger. You are bigger and you're greater than my college education or what my friends are telling me to do or all the things I can think of in this natural fleshly realm. I need you. I need your spirit connected with my spirit to move forward. So we can test the true worship and those answers, I would, we'll narrow them down to three. I'm sure there's many, but these three things are a good test if you're in the spirit or in the flesh. 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says, No one says Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. So if you are claiming Jesus as the mighty one and as the master and as Lord of the situation, then that is one step closer to being in the Spirit and not in the flesh. And I want you to think of that as a, as a way of worshiping the Lord, of relinquishing your ways and saying, Jesus is Lord of this situation, giving him the access to move on your behalf and giving him the access to help you make a decision or to hold you back from doing something that your flesh wants so much. And maybe it's a huge purchase. Your flesh wants that new car and your friends are telling you, get that car. And you've got people telling you deserve that car. But your spirit man may be saying, just wait, I've got something better. So we tap into the things of the Spirit. So a Spirit-led worship or Spirit-led decisions or mindset is going to point to Jesus every time. So in your work, your play, your relationships, if you are truly in the Spirit, there's going to be a, a glorifying of Jesus. Give Him all the glory. And we sing songs about that. And we perhaps think we are giving him the glory. But when you've made that decision, is truly God getting the glory? You know, I've even heard people say, I prayed for this. I prayed for this spouse. It's almost like their prayer is what got them the answer. But who is truly the giver? Who is the answer? Who is the answer? Who answered that prayer? You were only, your prayer was only a tool making your request made known unto God, your heavenly Father. He's your only source. So a true worshiper will even relinquish their prayer to the Lord. And that is, that is a form of worshiping Him and worshiping Him in the Spirit, not in the flesh. So 1 Corinthians 14, and we will not read that whole chapter, however it would be good for you. But he who acts or speaks by the Spirit edifies. So when you are making a decision, whether it's to enter into a new relationship or choose a new job, there'll be, it'll be edifying. It'll be edifying to yourself. There'll be, um, there'll be a good comforting feeling in this decision. And guess what else? There'll be peace. So when you are led by the Spirit, it's going to point to Jesus, yourself, your decision, and even those around you are going to be focusing on Jesus, not how great you were, not how smart you were that you got yourself that promotion, but it's going to point to Jesus, and there's going to be an uplifting. And edification is life. There's going to be life in that decision. It's not going to be dull and dry. You know, sometimes um, we may listen to a motivational speaker and we get really excited. There is life in what they're speaking. There's edification. We are excited and they're, they're, we're feeling that, that life. And there's other times someone can speak and they can seem quite intelligent and quite knowing uh, quite knowledgeable of what they're speaking about, but there's kind of a dullness and a dryness. Well, perhaps they're doing that in their flesh. And this can even be, you know, a, a, a Bible teacher. But it can be someone you know at work. Maybe you have to go to conferences for your job. And, and some of the speakers at that conference will be so dull. And you are like wanting to check your text messages. And, and it's boring to you. And then someone else will come on that platform or at that podium. And there'll be an, you'll feel energized. You will feel edified. You'll feel lifted up. Perhaps you'll feel challenged because that's life too. Sometimes you'll feel corrected. That's bringing life to you and to your situation. 
So when something is done in the Spirit, and we're speaking specifically about relinquishing us and our ways to, as a form of worship to the Lord, it will point to Jesus and there will be life in it. There'll be a level of excitement. And it may not be exactly something great that everybody wants to hear or everybody goes along with your decision, but there'll be life. And with that life, there's going to be a level of edification. And on the other end of that, there's going to be peace, the peace that passes all understanding. You know, those of you that can remember when you truly received Jesus into your life and you were called out of darkness into his light, there was a switch there was a change. There was, you may have been in fear. You may have been um, down. You may have been physically down, financially down, emotionally down. You were under conviction and condemnation and all the yucky stuff. When you received the Spirit of God and you worshiped Him by giving Him your life and confessing Him as Lord and Savior, there was a lifting of that weight. And that leads us into the third thing. There is a freedom. So a good test, are you truly worshiping him in spirit and in truth? It will point the way to Jesus. He will get the glory. There'll be an uplifting. There'll be life. There'll be peace. There'll be an edification. And thirdly, there will be a level of freedom. There will be freedom in what you're saying. So as we, lead, as we are led in worship, um, a life-giving worship, there is a peace in that. And it's going to point to the Jesus, not just for you, not just for your decision. I made a good decision here. I made a good choice. But there is going to be life for those around you. Now, if you're a parent, we have followers all the time, whether they're three or whether you're a parent of grown children, they are in some way, some form or some fashion, looking to you. What are you pointing them to? Are you pointing them by your lifestyle of worship to Jesus? Are you pointing them to a better way? Are you edifying them in your choices? And ultimately, are you leading them to freedom? There, are, there is a level of freedom in the things of God and doing things according to His Word, doing things according to His Word, that you can't have any other way. And you know, we think of as children, the freedom children have. They are laughing and playing and riding their bicycles or skateboards or jumping on their trampoline, and there is a freedom in those children. Those children are not in condemnation. Those children are free. That's the way we should be with our Father. When we spend that time to dedicate our lives and our day to Him. We are worshiping Him. We're worshiping Him in spirit. It's a better way to live in the spirit and not in the flesh, but we have to make that choice. So another aspect of that life and that freedom, that it will be easy. Mar Matthew 11.30 says, My yoke is easy, my burden is light. If you are in the spirit and not in the flesh, your lifestyle of worship will be light and easy. Now, I'll just be frank. It's not going to always be perfect. We live in a world that is filled with sin and sickness and disease, poverty, death, terrorism. There are things in this world that are far from perfection. They seem far from easy, but I'm talking about inside. How are you inside? Have you dedicated all the stuff you see, even if you watch the news and you hear of terrible things? Have you put that over onto the Lord in an act of worship? And it, it perhaps may be local things. Maybe there's terrible things happening in your neighborhood right now. As you release that to the Lord, as you worship Him and say, you are greater. You are greater than this crime rate. You are greater than this sickness in my body. You are greater than this relationship problem or situation. You have literally switched from the flesh way of doom and doubt and fear 
and maybe arguing and aggression on your part, you have switched to a level of worship by saying, you are the big one. You are almighty. And you're giving him the glory. And remember, that's not just for you. That's those who are watching you. If you don't have children, there's a realm of influence we all have. It may be in our neighborhood. It may be at the gym. It may be our book club. Somebody is watching you. We all have a ministry of reconciliation. We are reconciling people either back to their place with the Lord or opening their, their lives up to the freedom that's in Jesus. So I encourage you today for that spirit-led worship. So if his yoke is easy and his burdens light and you are feeling heavy and weighed down today, do that little check. Are your choices and your decisions worshiping the Lord? And remember, I'm not talking just about going to church and praising God and worshiping the Lord. I am talking about a lifestyle where He is greater, He is bigger, acknowledging His greatness, acknowledging His bigness, and giving that over to Him. So as you give it to Him, you have entered into His freedom. So worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. That is Psalms 96.9. You're worshiping the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. The NIV, and this is still Psalms 96.9, says the splendor. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Splendor is the glory of God. That's one of the definitions of glory is splendor. That is everything good. So you're worshiping the Lord in the beauty of His glory. The glory of God is, and it can be a bright light. It can be the good feeling, the goosebumps, the warmth, the, the, the happiness, the joy, the peace. But the glory of God, there's favor in that glory. There's provision in that glory. What you need is in that glory. You know, I think of um, a lesson I taught recently on Nehemiah. You know, Nehemiah had a burden on his heart for Israel and to rebuild the walls. And I would encourage you to study that and go back and read it. We don't have that time while well, I'm with you in this, this little segment in the show. But I encourage you to read about Nehemiah. That burden was so strong on him. He took it to the Lord as an act of worship. He said, this is big in me. He gave it to the Lord. The Lord gave him instructions in the building of that wall. Not only in the, in the instructions, but he gave him favor because he had to go to his boss, who was the king. He was a cupbearer for the king. He had to go to his boss and say, I need some time off. There may be something the Lord is leading you to do, perhaps a mission trip, perhaps even just taking one day out of the month and doing something for the kingdom. That burden that's in you, there's a good chance God put that in there. And as you pray it out, it is a form of worshiping Him. And on the other end of that worship, there will be the favor you need. Nehemiah had favor with that king. Not only did he have favor, he got the letters he needed for the provision to build the wall. Not only did he get the provision he needed to, to accomplish the work that was in his heart, God gave him the wisdom of how to even go about hiring the people and getting the people he needed to help. Building a wall around a city is not just one person. He needed that help. He needed to enter into a place of worship to get the people together to help him. And you know what else was even in that if you read it closely? There was even the finances and the resources to build himself a house for he and his family while the work was being accomplished. Guess what else was in that package? He had his old job back when he was ready. Think about that. What is God leading you to do? What would this much worship, this much relinquishing the flesh to the spirit accomplish in your world? It may not be building a big wall around a city. It may not be changing a nation, but there is something there is something that your worship 
the act of your worship, there's a blessing on the other end of it. And with that could be your promotion, could be, if you're single, perhaps the spouse you've been praying for. You know, we'll take a minute and talk about that. Sometimes we ask the Lord for something that we're not ready for. Getting into a place of worship with the Lord and relinquishing that to Him, He will get you ready for it. Maybe you are seeking this promotion at work and you're not prepared for it. Spend some time worshiping the Lord. Spend some time relinquishing your way of doing things and watch that door open up. Watch the favor. Someone perhaps will mentor you. Maybe you'll, you'll just have a knowing of a new and better way to do something because you spent that time with the Lord. Remember the test. The true worship is in spirit, not in your flesh. So is it giving the glory to Jesus? Is it pointing to Jesus, not to you? Look what my money did. Look what my degree did. But is it pointing to Jesus? Is it building and encouraging and bringing life? And then ultimately, is there freedom in this? You know, going back to Nehemiah, he had a burden in his heart, strong, heavy burden in his heart. The outcome of his relinquishing that to the Lord and spending the time worshiping the Lord was freedom from that burden, was freedom for other people. There was a testimony at the other end of that. So there is freedom in your worship. So as we embrace that freedom, that splendor, everything good, we come to His glory. We need His glory in the in decisions we have. And it may be a little decision. Do I move to the other side of town? Which that could be a big one, but in the scope of things, that may be a little decision. Do I... Um, continue down the path in a relationship? Do I witness to that person that lives two houses down from me? When the glory of God is on your decisions, you're not going to miss. He's going to go with you. You're not doing it alone. What did we learn just a few minutes ago? His yoke is easy. His burden is light. So as you truly embrace Him, the other end of that is His glory. And in that glory is splendor. It's everything good. It's the provision you need to do what's on your heart. And there's a freedom. There's a joy and a freedom. So in worship Him in spirit and in truth. So remember, it's going to point the way to Jesus. It's going to bring life. It's not going to be dull and boring. There's going to be an excitement. There's going to be an edification. And spirit-led worship sets free. It may set you financially free. You know, most people would really, if they think about it, desire to be debt-free. Your father wants you to be debt-free. Sometimes there's a process in that debt-freeness. Debt-freeness is freedom to do the things of the Lord. That's freedom, no question. You can send your children to college. You can take those vacations. There's freedom. but before the freedom is completely manifested in your life, there needs to be that relinquishing in worship. Simply saying, you are bigger than this financial mess. You are bigger than all of this. Worship Him by giving yourself to Him. Not once, not twice, not once a week on Sundays. Continually, daily, giving yourself over to the Lord. So give all to Him as an act of worship. And think of it even as a worship. Think of it as a, as a, a sacrifice in giving. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. So if we must worship Him in spirit and truth, and He is a Spirit, where He is, there is freedom. So as we worship Him, there is freedom. What do you need freed from as you're listening to this teaching? What is heavy? What is not light and easy in your life right now? Maybe it's a sin. You know, there are secret sins and unconfessed sins. It 
you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from that. And an act of giving that over to Him and worshiping Him in that situation is going to lead to not just the momentary freedom of, shoo, that burden's off of me, I'm forgiven, and then going right back into it, but the provision's there to keep you out of it. What if you're making the same mistakes in relationships repeatedly or the same financial mistakes repeatedly? You get out of debt and then you get back in debt and you, you go from job to job or maybe you're having a hard time finding a job. Give it to Him. He cares. If He cares about how many hairs are on your head, don't you think He cares that you have the freedom you need? to live a life of peace and joy? Remember, it's light and easy with the Lord. If it's heavy and dull and boring, you're not living it in the Spirit. You're trying to do it in the flesh. Even to set before you at this time and teach what the Lord put on my heart to present, I needed Him. If I was doing it on my own power and my own steam and my own knowledge, it would not do what it needs to do. It needs to go forth and touch a chord in you and become real and become a rhema word that you make that decision, your choice, to give every day to Him and live a life of true worship in your spirit, out of your spirit. That same verse in 2 Corinthians 3.17, I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. When God is in it or present, He is a living spirit. The constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. Let me read that to you again. Constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. That's bondage. That's rules and regulations. That may be something you've put on your own self. It may be somebody put that on you. Maybe you grew up thinking you had to do it this way. He wants to take that burden. He wants to take that constrictive legalism and change that to freedom in Him. We are free. I'm still reading. This is still in Corinthians 3, 2 Corinthians 3. It says, we are free. Nothing between us and God. Nothing between you and the Lord. Our faces are shining with the brightness of His face. His glory. His glory on you. When you are shining with the glory of God, not only is that going to get you the favor you need, perhaps the promotion, the attractiveness you need for that new job, the glory of God is filled with everything good, everything you possibly need. Just like Nehemiah needed to build a wall, he needed to take the time to give it to God to worship Him. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. And remember the three things. It'll point to Jesus, not a man. It'll point to Jesus. It'll bring life and encouragement and edification. And thirdly, it brings freedom. Thank you for this time. And I pray that that freedom re just reverberates through your life. Thank you again. Gifts of Grace International and Kathleen Rosner presents a program designed to equip, edify, and empower the body of Christ through love and God's grace. Kathleen's vision is to lead by encouraging everyone to serve and become involved in the Lord's work, empowering a new generation of intercessors through impartation of the power of God's love and the teachings of the Word of God. Now let us welcome Kathleen Rosner.